So you are live, oh, right? Yeah, hello. Oh, hello, fellow scratchers. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, if you're a scratcher on your this platform, let me just say, let me hear a hi from you guys. You can type in hi in your comment sections. If you're a scratcher, you're here, hello. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing, okay, some people are here. So, um, hi, my name is Jerry once again, and um, hope you had a great week. So we're having, yeah, having um, yeah. I just want to make it come live. Okay, fine. We're back again. And uh, last week we did a lot of stuff. We learned a lot of stuff. And this week we're going to be going practical. We'll be doing a lot of practical section today. So I need you guys to be following me as um, as much as possible. We're going to have a wonderful time. So I got um, some of you um, assignments. I got assignment from this from Breed Hub. We did a parrot, which was very interesting. And I got from Bandi. Bandi did um, 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 the, the, the maze. He did a maze with dots. And um, it was kind of fun, very fun. I enjoyed playing the game myself. Um, Comfort did a dancing Bella. Fine, Comfort, very good. Then um, Adebola Dami, Adebola Dami did a rabbit, a rabbit running in the forest, which was awesome, perfect. Um, then Ola, Ola Dako, Ola Dako did help the man, where the man was there, and um, they were trying to help, and uh, it was fun. So I wanted to bring some of you live today, but I just discovered that I didn't make mention of that. So, um, so I want, um, um, so what we're going to do is, so we don't waste much of our time. By next week, some of you will be coming live to tell us what you've learned and what you've been doing. Like, um, Ola Dako and Adebola, um, you guys should be prepared for next week. I'll be, I'll be asking some of us to come live to see what um, we've been doing or what we've done over the years. So today, we're going to do something very simple, but very complex. So today, we're going to do a, comp a complex program. We'll be doing a lot of simpler programs um, since the cost of this um, program. Today, we're going to, we're going to develop, um, we're going to, we're going to look at a problem and try to solve the problem. So let's see what we're going to do today. Okay, let's, today we're going to be doing, um, oh, I sent my today. You get, yes, I got it. I got yours today, fine. So today we're going to be doing, um, we're going to do develop a game that you and I can play. A game you can play with your friends, the game you can play with yourself. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And, um, I just I need your, your comments. I need you sending your comments. Of course, I'll be getting all of them. So we're going to do a very simple, we're going to do a very simple but yeah, complex game where you can play with yourself and with your arm um with your with your oh Jacob, Jacob did his homework. Very good. I love the fact that we are following this and we are doing our homework. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to let, let, let me bring the problem statements now. The problem is let's develop um Let's develop a game that um, involves us, uh, I don't know, say catching catching something or catching a ball. Well, I'm going to use the principle of mathematics. I'm going to use the principle of physics to do that. Okay? I did my work. Very good, Inca. Very good, Inca. For all of you that did your work, kudos to all of you. Please remember that next week, some of you are going to be sharing your screen with us. We'll go live next week. Some of you will go live next week. Uh, yeah, please, I saw your own work. I saw all of you that did your work and sent to hello at coderina.org. I got your whole own work and I went through all of them. Remember, I want to make a game that involves us catching something, something falling from the sky, then we'll have a bowl, like sink a bowl, so you just pick them up and stuff. So 
let's go and let's have fun remember uh we are all scratcher so if i'm calling any of you i'm calling you scratcher so yinka scratcher um Glee scratcher um Timito quest scratcher everybody on this platform we are all scratchers I've, by the power confiding me i've confided in you guys to be called scratchers just like um others are, are called programmers okay so you are all scratchers so let's quickly go to this and um, we have this. I hope we can all see our screen. So the idea is for us to make something falling from the sky and the bull trying to catch the stuff and, and stop. So let's just go to this. So let's have fun. Let's watch and have fun, okay? So I'm gonna remove this. I want something falling from the sky. Remember the problem and a solution. So I'm going to come choose fight. I choose my spies. I need something for the sky. Let's see. Um, ball. I'm going to choose. Okay, fine. Let me choose this ball. So, good. So, let me choose this ball. And, um, yeah. So, I want this ball to be falling from the sky. And this is from the sky. So, remember. I want to use our mathematical knowledge for this over the very good mass. We have on our, if you are very conversant with your graph, you have your x and y axis. So we are going to be using that knowledge of x and y axis to, to solve this problem. So we want this guy to be falling from up here. Okay. I hope you can all see my screen. And my screen is not blur. I hope you can all see my screen and it's not blur. If you can see my screen and it's not blur, type we can see it on the comment section so i know that i'm communicating with my scratchers if we can see our screen and it's not blue just type fine we can see so i know i'm communicating with my scratchers yeah the assignment was beautiful damn lola assignment was beautiful so hope you can all see the screen okay fine i guess that is a yes we'll just continue so I have this and um, we want it falling from the sky, just like you said. Very simple. So we'll come here to our events. We're going to be picking each of the codes and try to explain them before our time. Come to our programming um, environment. I will go to, because we want it to be falling from the sky. We'll come to motion. We're going to pick. Uh, random position, meaning should be falling from different um, position. And remember, I said, we're going to be using our knowledge from graph. So we have um, the, the Y and the X axis. Your Y axis is the horizontal line, while your X axis is the vertical line. So horizontal means it's coming up from, um, from the sky. So if you're coming from the sky, so on, on your Y axis, and that's why we're going to put uh, this guy, I say set Y, set y because it's coming from the sky set y to 180 okay so if i play this let's see what happens okay fine so you can see it's from the sky it's at the top of the screen because of the y axis fine that means it's working then we're going to say we're going to pick this because i want it to be falling down remember i'm going to be making some mistakes so that you guys can be getting so that you guys will be correcting it so I will see who and who is following and who and who is not uh, following. Then we say, yeah, set Y. Then we want to change Y because we want it to be falling from the sky. I'm going to put this inside this loop. Last week we talked about loop and we said loops are repetition of words. Or uh, of course, yeah, you repeat different code with your with your forever. Then you say change y right to minus five. If you change y right to minus five, what happens? Let me play this code. Very good. Now we have it falling down. Remember, in computer science or in mathematics, anything coming down is a negative number. We bring we use the negative number to make sure it's, com it's coming down. That's why we're having this minus five here. Yeah. Okay, I can say minus, minus 10, and you have it coming down fast. It's coming down fast. So let me do it minus 5, so that um, it comes down so we can see it coming down. Okay? 
Yeah, yeah fine. This is what we, we're trying to achieve. Okay. I remember I said we're going to make things boil, falling from the sky. They were going to come in with a if statement. Then come with a if statement and say if inside the forever. So we, last week we didn't talk about the if statement, but we're going to use the if statement. So if statement is also another kind of um, um, looping system. Okay. If what happens, the call wants it to be coming down, we'll come to the sensing, let's we'll come to sensing, we'll come to operation, we pick a less than one. Good. So, are we following? Let me see. We will see. Oh, you can see it. You can't see the screen. Can you see the screen now? Can we see the screen now? Oh, can we see the screen now? Hope the screen is not blocked. The voice is not clear and it's breaking. Yeah. yeah, hello. I'll try to be as audible as possible. Can you hear me now? And can you see the screen? Hope the screen is not blocked. Okay, fine. I can see that some can hear me. Yeah, so hope my voice is no longer breaking. So let's just go. Okay, fine. So let me continue. So um, we what we are saying is we want to create fine. Good, good, good. Now you can hear my voice. So um, we are going. To, we are, We want this ball to be falling, and the idea is for the ball to be falling down. And a ball picking the ball up, like um, like a game you can play with your with your family or with your friends, and so okay. We we'll say um, we're going to put the less than sign and say put y because we are dealing with the y axis. I'm using the y axis um, in relation with your with your graph. Okay, I'm using it in relation with the graph. I said if y let me see. When it comes to motion, and say, uh, I, this code, the code is kind of pretty much much. So I'm just trying to make sure we, we get to um, what we want to do before the end of this class. I'll say this is. Um, yeah, we we'll change Y, we put Y to the left position here. Okay, and we'll say uh, here is, we're going to put minus, let's put 170. We want it to be falling. The graph is 180. We're using 170, so we can be seeing it when it's um, um, coming down. Okay, so. That's what we're trying to achieve here. And we have this if y position is less than minus 170. Okay, fine. So it comes from different different position. Then you say go to random. So it comes to random positions. And uh, we cannot set this. Uh, y again to so 180. Okay, now set one coming down. So you have it. If I play this code, you have it coming down from different positions. So it goes to different positions from the y axis that is your, the upper part of the screen and comes down. Okay, now we've achieved this. The ball is falling. Now we're going to make like a bow to make um, a bow catch the ball. Okay, so now we come back. We, we come back to pick another spike. We come down and look for a bow. So oh, fine. So I'll just pick this guy. If I'm too fast, please call my attention. I don't know if I'm if I'm too fast. If I'm too fast, call my attention. I'm too fast for my attention. So yeah, 
So we pick a bow and we tend to program the bow and say this bow moves from left to right to catch um, the ball. So I pick this bow and I want to program the bow to move left and right. Now there are two ways we are going to do this. I'm going to teach you the hard way. So I'm going to say um, whenever this guy is clicked, um, then we're going to pick our looping uh, our loop and say forever. Whenever it's clicked, forever. If if the right key is pressed, then we're going to come to sensing. Sensing um, is one of the important codes that we use in a uh, in a scratch. Then we'll come here and say if let's do for rights first because now i want to program my keys the key um the arrow key on my keyboard the left and right arrow key if right arrow key is pressed down what happens then you're going to change because now the boy is going to move in the vertical line so you're on your x axis so you're going to say uh move x you're going to click s change x with x yeah change x by then so if i play this code i'm going to be having this you can see i'm using this i'm using my keyboard on my screen okay okay that is done you can move x by 10 so it's on the vertical line so we want to do for the left hand side we've done for the right hand side we're going to do for the left hand side we're still going to go back to control and pick the same um um if then statement and come back to sensing and go to space then we're going to pick this and say because we've done for right let's do for left when the left arrow key is pressed on your keyboard when the left arrow key is pressed on your keyboard we're going to change um it's going left that's going negative. We're going to change y by minus 10. Let's see if that is in play. So we have this fine. That is going to play. You know why? Repeat change y to minus 10 instead of change x to minus 10. So I told you I'm going to be making a mistake. I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes so that you guys can pick what I'm doing. Okay? Okay? Fine. Somebody is saying X, not Y. Very good. Dami Lola, very good. Very good, Dami Lola. You are following. So we're going to pick X. Change X by negative value of minus 10. And we're going to play our code and we see that i'm using my values i'm using my arrow keys on my system and i'm having this so you can see your ball is falling and your ball is here so pick it up okay let me bring the ball a little bit up fine now we're going to go back to our ball okay because our ball is falling and it's touching the ball but nothing is happening yet because we've not done any code concerning that. We're going to go back to our ball. And we're going to write new code for the ball. And we'll go to events to pick when this is clicked. Now what happens? Forever, we pick your loop again. And say forever, if the ball is touching, we want to make this, if this ball, if the ball, Touches the board, what happens? Then you say you're going to pick um, your forever, pick your if today's code to understand how if statements work. You put your if then here, and you go back to sensing. I'm going to pick touch mouse pointer. So if you say if touch mouse pointer 
Then I changed the third mark pointer, which was drop down um, arrow there to edge to so go because we have the bow there. If the ball touches the bow, what happens? That's why I have then here. Then we can say uh, we go to we go to come back to random position, right? And set y. Yes, set y. Yeah, fine. We set y to one eighty. So let's see what that entails. So we have this. So whenever it touches um, the bow, it goes back up. Fine. We are getting somewhere. Now let's add. Let's add the sound. Let's add the sound to this so it's, we have a proper sound. Let's say if this touches the bow, then it should make a sound. Let me add the sound to this. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. Fine. We have this sound. We can decide to change the sound. Um, let me look for. Okay. Let me use this sound. Let me use the pop sound. So I just come here and say pop. And we have this. Very good. So when it touches it, it touches and um, we have it back. It sets Y. It's setting Y to 180. So it goes back. It goes back to the top. Set Y to 180. We have this. Let's see what we have here. Good. So it goes back. It goes back. Comes down. Okay, are we getting this? Are we on the same page? Are we on the same page? Yeah. So we've achieved that. Now we can duplicate the code. But before then, let's have a counter. Now, for those of you guys that did um, Python last week, the, the teacher in the Python class made mention of variables, meaning a variable is anything you can assign a value to. For example, I can assign that million dollar to five. And so whenever you see that million dollar, let that million dollar be five, okay? So we're going to assign a variable to count this. So we go to variable, you go to variable, you click on, we're going to make our variable because we want to assign a variable to the ball. So we are going to name it um, count. Let's name it count. I don't know, count or scores or number. So let's, let, I'm going to choose count. I pick count. So we have a variable here. We want this ball to be counting, which we've added a variable and we have counts here. So we're going to assign special tasks. We we'll say we're going to set the variable at zero first. Put it at zero. Then your variable changes to so one. Let's put it after you you have the sound. It changes to one, and you have let's see if it works. Okay, fine. Now you can see your variable here. For each ball, the ball touches. Variable count six, okay? And this is how we declare a variable in any programming language, be it Scratch, be it um, um, Python, HTML, and the rest. So we now have this. So we made this. One other thing we can do is to make different ball coming down. So it should not just be one ball, but it's going to be very easy to get it, just one ball. So we are, we are going to duplicate the ball. And as we're duplicating the ball, we are also duplicating the codes. So when you duplicate any um, um, animation on Scratch, it duplicates the codes that, that goes with it. So I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go to the ball now. I right click on the ball and I see duplicate. And I duplicate this. So let me see. Let's say we have, um, uh, okay. See, this is okay. We have six balls, so um, the six balls.
can be coming in simultaneously. Oh, let me duplicate more. Let's have more balls. Okay, this is fine. Um, yeah, so this is fine. So if I do this, okay, you have different ball coming. So I'm going to touch some. I'm not going to touch some. And it keeps counting how many I have touched. So now we have this beautiful code here. And um, let's do something. Well, let's change the background. Let me have a gaming background. I go to backdrop. Let's see if we have a nice backdrop for that game. Uh, I don't know. You can just pick a backdrop that is, that is um, oh, let me pick this wall. Let me pick this wall. Okay, very good. So let me pick this one. I think this good trick. So we can have all of these from going to, and it keeps counting. It keeps counting. Okay, so we have this coming in. What if we want to have um, a bad ball? Let's say we have a ball whose objective is to, whenever it touches the ball, it, it decreases the count. Instead of having, instead of the Count to be increasing, we just have let's have one or two bad balls that decreases the count. Okay, so I'm just going to I'm going to pick. I'm going to go back to spice. Let me pick a ball different from the one we already have, so that you know the ball when you see the ball when you're playing the game. Okay, you know the ball. So I pick this. I mean, let's pick this beach ball. And let me reduce the size by let me say 60. So whenever I see the beach ball, when the beach ball touches the ball, um, we want it to to decrease the count. So what I'm just going to do is same code. I'm not going, I'm not going to waste my time writing the code again. I'll just bring the code back into the other um, beach ball. I'll just copy this. And say put it inside here, right? Copy this other code and uh, put it inside here. When I go to Beach Ball, I have the code copied already. So it saved me the stress of writing the code um, over and over again. So if I if I just do this, I have ex the exact code I have for um, this um, ball. The first ball is the exact code I'm having for the second ball. Now, what we said is whenever the ball touches this ball, this beach ball that we have, um, it should decrease the count. Okay? Now let me see if we are following. Uh, so my ball is not going back up. Oh, if your ball is not going back up, just follow the code. Okay? Follow the code. And if it is, you can... Go back as many times to watch this video as you want, so you get what we're doing. So it seems um, you made a mistake somewhere, and that is the good thing about programming. If you make a mistake in one code, your code is just malfunction. Okay, so it might be a minus. Uh, maybe you didn't put the minus uh, um, sign as a value. So we want to code this ball that whenever it touches the ball, it should decrease. The, the count. So what do we do? We just we just come here and say uh, instead of change count by one, we're just going to say change count by the number of times we want it to be. Let's say minus three. Let's we have three. So whenever the ball touches the ball, it's going to change to minus three, and we can also change the sound of the ball in particular to make sure that um, whenever we hear that sound. We, we know that the ball has touched the have touched the, the 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 ball has touched the ball, so we can change this sound to basketball sound. Let's let's go to sound and look for um, a sound. Okay, let's use this um, electric bass. I think I, I I like the electric bass. So we just come back to the code. Come back to um, sound. 
which we have here, and put the electric uh, bars. So we we'll have something like this. So if it does this, go your stretches. Fine. You can see. So it's decreasing the value. So what we just did was, what we just did now is to make sure that whenever the gold touches the yellow ball, it increases its value. But whenever it touches the other ball, it decreases the value by by two. So we can say we want to decrease the value by three, by four, by any value we want. But well, I'm choosing two. Another beautiful thing we can do is to make the ball. We can duplicate this ball. So you say let's have three of it. Passing with the same code. Now you can just see what I did. I only changed the count from um, one to minus three. So whenever it touches any of this ball, you're just going to. And you see, you've developed something, you've done something, and you can play with your friends. You can use this as a game, I don't know, and play with your friends. So whenever it touches that ball, it decreases the value. Look at your count. The count increases when it touches this, and decreases when it touches the, the, uh, the other ball. OK? Now, we're going to do something interesting. Let's see if we can do why. We don't want it to be counting minus 2. So maybe when it gets to minus, minus anything, minus 1, minus 2, we can do um, game over. Or we can do, um, yeah, we can do game over, and we can even increase it to the point that when it touches, um, when we get a certain number, we can say we've won the game. Okay. Now let me go back to the chat room and see what is happening. How do I download Scratch? Okay, you guys asking how to download Scratch. We're going to send that to you shortly. Yeah, I hope you're all following. If you're enjoying the class, I just want you to type something on your comments and say you're enjoying the class. Let me know how many of us are following. Are we enjoying the class? For enjoying the class, let me see your comments up. Oh, I won't go much. Okay, fine. Oh, somebody said beach ball. Sir, can you make the game to say over when it touches the, beach, the ball? Oh, yes. That's what we want to do now. We're going to we're going to program in such a way that when our count comes to zero, we're going to say game over. Okay? Let, let's, let's see how to do that. Let's see how to do that. That is, that is a very fine observation from you. Um, that is a very fine observation from you, Ashika. So, we okay fine fine good i i have seen a lot of us are following so we just continue you can start throwing in your questions i'll, I'll do uh I'll, I'll, I'll answer all of them of course you know i told us last week that this is a practical class pure practical uh we don't have so how do we download scratch on the tablet oh yeah you have you have some um some some um app of scratch on tablets but i would advise that you just download it on the laptop Except you want to um, be using Scratch on your, on your, on 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 your browser, not on the tab. Okay. So let's let's answer a um, few questions. Um, yeah. So we're going to make it to say game over when it comes to zero, or when it comes to um, any number less than um, 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 zero. Let's say minus one, uh, minus two, and the rest. So we can say game over, okay? So we're going to say, what do we do? So, so we're going to come here, we're going to pick a spite. And, um, sorry, I'm not picking a spite. So we're just going to bring another character. We're going to write this character and say, so I come to paint. I want to say game over. I come to paint. And I say, I come to text. Let me click on text. And I type game. Let me type game. Oh, sorry. Game over. I can have this on um, 
like I have this let me let me let me give you a black color because of the screen so we can all see it so now it's not really showing well on the screen so let's let's pick on that color and see now anything I type here appears on your screen okay for those of us that don't know that anything that we type here appears on our our screen so let's look for a color that's going to bring out the game over yeah let's look for a color that's going to bring out the game over Uh, I think we we'll go. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know. So you, you just pick your your own color, or any color that is um, suitable for you. Of course. Let's see this guy. So I don't know. We can go with. Uh, okay, let's go with this. Oh no, it's not showing. So let's just pick the green. Let's pick the name. The green color. I need to do that. So let's stick with the green color. So somebody said we want we should do it, it should be so this is game over. So when does this need to come out? Let me reduce it. Okay, fine. So it needs to come out when um, we lose count of um anything less than zero. Okay. When you have your minus, for example, if you have this minus two as a count on your screen, you should just say um, game over. And, uh, let's, let's, let's. So now we have these spikes. We can write the code. We created our own spikes. You see, these are we create spikes with costume. I create my own spikes and say, I come here and pick this key. And so whenever the flag um, is clicked. We want um I want you to hide the game over should hide first. I'm going to show now first. Okay, so game over whenever the spice is clicked, game over should hide. And we're going to use a very important um, um, um looping statement here and say uh, okay fine, wait until so we're going to do this and say whenever that flag is clicked. The game over, the, the, the text game over should hide and wait until what happens. Uh, we're coming to, we'll come to operators and we'll, because we want it to be less than zero, right? So that is the initial plan. You see, we put this here, wait until score and count. Wait until count, we're going to pick our count. We put the count here. Count is less than uh, zero. But we won't say count is less than zero because we're not going to say that count is less than zero because we already declared our count, our variable count, to so set it at zero. So we can decide to change this setup. Or we just say so let's leave it at minus one. So wait until this is minus one and uh, then it shows back. It reveals itself when it's minus one, that is when the game over um, um, text will come out. Okay? And we'll now say it should stop the whole, it should stop the whole program. The user will pick our stop from events. You see, stop all, you mean stop the whole, stop the whole program. So let's try that and see if it works. I'm not really sure this whole, but you know, like I said last week, Scratch is all about experiments. So we're experimenting everything to see what we get. So you just keep trying and trying and trying to get the whole stuff. So we're going to say, um, okay, let's play this. Okay, so I'm just going to create. So I'm trying, I'm trying to, now let me try to get it back. So if I get this, Minus A. And if I get it one more time, you see, game over. If I get it one more time, game over. 
Now we can add sound to this game over. So when it's, when it's game over, let's have um, um, let's have sound. Sounds are very important, you know, to make us um, say play this sound. Start sound. We can put it under this code and see what sound do we pick for it. So we we'll go back to sound and look for a sound that we can use for so whenever it writes game over. Something should play. I, I don't know, I don't know, you can, um... I don't know, you can just keep any sound. Okay, let's, let's do this. Connect. So we just go back to our code and change this to connect. We drop down menu. And you can pick your own sound, you know? You can pick your own sound that is fun to you. And, um... We can say you should repeat it so we can hear the sound. Because if we play this now, and we have let me game over. Okay, you just said the sound um, um came out, but it was fast and went up. So we can say let's use this um um, um button. We we'll go to repeat, and we can say you should repeat the sound. I don't know. Repeat the sound for maybe six times before it stops. So you know that the, so that you know that uh, the person has lost. We have this. Let's see if it works. Okay. So it made the sound. Can we say repeat the sound again? Since it's fast. Let's Let's see what happens. There it is. Should I? I hope you're having fun. Let me look at the comment section to see if I have questions. Uh, oh, no, yeah, yeah, she put a blues on her own. That's fine. Then what, what if we want to make it, um, we say, what if we want to make it, say, it gets to a, to a particular value, to a particular count, and um, it says you win. Because we did for game over, why don't we do for, oh, I won. Okay, so we're still going to do what we did, same method we did with um, game over. So we're just going to go back to um, choose a spike, then we're going to paint this, and um, I don't know, I don't know. we're going to say, go back to text, and say, I won, or you won, because we are programming the game for, for players, you won. And you have like an exclamation mark there, okay? And let, now let's have a different color for you. Now you see anything I'm writing here or typing here actually appears here. So I can use this place, I can actually put this where I want it to be. So for those of us that are good with um, any design to beat your courage or your um, um, Photoshop, um, um, your Illustrator, you can um, you you be very good with um, design. So this is graphic design work. Okay. So now we say we want it to get to. Let's say okay. What if it gets to value twenty discount? What if discount gets to twenty? Let's say the first. And person to get to 20 says um, you won. So we can do this and say um, you won. Let's change the color. It shouldn't be the same color with. Um, um, so let me pick a color. I don't know. So you can just pick your own color that you want. And it's going to be cool with this. Okay, let's use this color. You want okay? Show. Sure. You can use your you can use your colors, any color you you deem fit for yourself. Okay, and we're just going to go back to code. Now this is not on any code. So if I play the game, it's just going to be showing you one, you one, you one, you one because we've not done any program on it. So we'll go back to right. Okay, we're here on spike two. We'll go back to code. We can change this and say you one. 
if I put changes and say game over, game over all you lose. Right? You just make it fun in your own words. So the idea is creating this with your your name. Okay? And we say oh yeah. Okay, yeah. So we just do what we did for the last code of um we just bring the last code thing. So so we just change some things. So I don't go back writing this code over and over again. Okay? And we just copy this to the one. Very good. And we change it to what we want to change it to. So now I will, I will just remove this. Or well, let me just write this code from, from the scratch so you understand. Instead of me changing. So I come here and say whenever your flag is clicked for the game to start, hide the one first. So I go to loops, I see the hide button here, hide your one. First, let me hide your one. And um, wait until you come here. Say wait. So when you wait until what? You go to your printer. Now remember, when we're doing that for you lose or game over, sorry, we we did less than. So this is where you, your operators and your mathematics comes in play. So that's why I say um, scratch is educational. Cheat cheesy words. You're doing your classroom, you know, masks and stuff, and bring it down to um, the programming environment so you can you can um, use the knowledge gained from class and you know import it here. So we use the less than value because we wanted it to when the count is less than zero, when the game is over. But now we want to place a value and say when the when the when the count is more than that value or up to that value, um, you should say you won and the game will stop. Okay? So, and uh, we're just going to say, we're going to pick the greater sign, the greater than, because of, we want to assign that value, of course. Uh, so, we'll come here and say, wait until your count, we come back to our variable, pick out our count, I'm putting here. Remember, we assigned um, we assigned we assigned something to the count, and um, that's why we're bringing the variable count to this smaller box here. I say, wait until count is greater than. Now we said twenty. Let's see twenty. So your count will be greater than twenty. That means from twenty one upward before you can win the game. Okay. Some of you can increase yours. You can say yours can be hundred. Some can say yours can be two hundred, depending on how fit you want this to um, happen. Then when 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 your count is above 20, it should um, show. You want to come up. I'm bringing my show. It should show, right? And I say, I'm bringing my show. And I, and I come to stop all events. Come to control. And see stop all. So if I play this, okay. Let me, so let me don't waste our time. Conference is two more. Four, so let me just put it at at ten. So you just get the idea of what I'm doing. We put it at ten. Let me see if I have this. Okay, because I'm not struggling myself to get it. Fine, you won. So, one beautiful thing we can do is now to add sound to it. Just add sound to so to make it pop up and you know, everybody have the sound. I, I love sounds very well. It's actually bring the beauty of the audio code. Because, um, yeah. So let me, I, I need a clapping sound. You know, when you do something, everybody clap. <laughs> when I come back to the code, I say, bring sound. Just like we did in the last one. Bring sound here. And uh, clap. And we can bring events. Um, and say, repeat the clapping for. I don't know, I don't know, but um, 
press it 10 times before it's, it's, it stops the game. So if you have this, three, two, this, this, this. But yes, so we have that. And it plays the song, it repeats this, it plays it for, 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 it repeats it for 10 times and the game stops. So this is what we have achieved today because of our time. Okay, let's we'll be doing a lot more stuff so we can see how Scratch is being used. And um, I don't know, I got, I don't know if I have questions from um, the audience, from you guys. Where are my Scratchers? I, I believe most of my Scratchers will not be doing what I'm doing since. So some of you will be having problems. If you're having difficulties in doing your what I've just done, you can send in your your comments to the chat where I can um, I can just help out. You know, as uh, as a community in Scratch, we help people solve problems, so we can help ourselves. I'm also learning Scratch. And um, next week, this is a very quick uh, announcement. Next week, we're going to be allowing some of you to come on live to share your screen with other Scratchers because we have other Scratchers all over the world watching this. We're going to be allowing you to share your screen. With, we'll, give you, we'll be giving you the chance to share your screen with other scratchers so that um, you can show the world what you've done or what you've achieved. So, uh, um, your parents, we need your parents to email us at elo.coderina.org, the email that you used to solve, um, to send in your assignments. We need your parents, now not you. Your parents should send their. Um, to send a request to hello at coderina.org to confirm that you as a child can come on screen to share your, your work with us. So your parents must actually must get a consent from your parents before you can come on, on the screen. So you can go, you can, uh, yeah. You can tell your parents to send in. You can tell your parents to send in their consent that they are, they are allowing you to come on uh, on this live channel to share your 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 um, development with other scratchers all over the world. If we don't see your parents' um, um, consent um, letter, we are not. Going to allow you to share your screen. So, for those of you that want to share your screen next week, I'll be opening this channel live for you guys to share what you've done and share it with other scratchers so that people can see your work all over the world. If you want to be part of that people or those people, please I'll tell your parents to share and um, send us um, a consent um, letter at hello at coderina.org so that we can select you to share what you've done. Okay, hello at coderina.org. Your parents should send in their consent before we allow you to share whatever you want to share. So, yes, somebody is asking, what is this week's um, assignments? Now, before we go to this week's assignments, um, if you know the class is interesting for you, you've learned one or two things, you've learned something new, something beautiful, you can send in um, your comments, send in and say, oh, this was fun, I'm happy. You know, just send you something to make me um, understand that um, I have scratchers for what I'm doing online. So send in your comments to say you are you're having fun. If you're having fun with the class, send me your comments before I share in my assignments for the week. Remember, I'm always evaluating everybody that's submitting your assignments. So for those of you all that are doing the assignments and uh, I'm submitting, I'm evaluating them. Yeah, this was, was for, okay, thank you, Tamilola, for speaking of adding levels. Yeah, so please, because our time is past spent, so one of the assignments we're going to be doing is to add levels to this. So to add from Bread Hub, yeah, thank you, Bread Hub. So you can add levels to the, the games, we, to, this, to this game we have created, and you can also do 
your assignment now is go back home for the rest of this week, try to develop your own game. Yeah. So for those of us that will be developing our own game, I want to share it on our live channel. Tell your parents, not you now, tell your parents to send um, a consent to hell at the Renaldo's Hog before Saturday next week. So we can get you up and um, we'll bring you live to share the development with other um, scratchers all over the world. So your assignment for the week is to create, your, develop your own game. It must not necessarily be a game. Just come up with a problem and solve. Come up with one problem and solve it using Scratch. And the beautiful thing about Scratch, yeah, Van Dan, I saw your game, uh, a maze game. It was excellent. I played it anyways, and I enjoyed um, playing it. So if you if you want to share that game with um, other Scratchers, yes, that was last week's assignment. If you want to share your game with other Scratchers all over the world, you can um, you can also tell your parents to send in the consent form. I am New Year, so how do we submit the assignment? Okay, Ken Day, um, you're going to submit your assignment to hello at coderina.org. It's going to be displayed on the screen now. Hello at coderina.org is the place to submit your assignment. Ken Day, it's going to be displayed on your screen. Hello at coderina.org. You can see it in the chat. Season on the chat, elacolina.org. That's where you submit your assignments. I, I love assignments and I, I love it when people do assignments. So please, all scratchers, all my scratchers around the world, please make sure you do your assignment very importantly. And uh, you see, the scratch is evolving every day, every time. For those of us that are very conversant with um, um, Lego EV3 or um, Lego We Do um, or Spike or Spike. Just came out so for those of us that have already had about spike um these are type of um stem robots that we use in training kits or oh, for those of you that is in the robot class i think the robot class where they are using lego you can see that you can actually use scratch to program your um lego robots to program your ev3 robots to program your widow robot and to program your spike robots so i'm going to be you see Scratch is moving up, evolving, evolving, making it fun for us to use every day and every time. So more questions now. If you have any questions that we can answer here, you can send in the questions. Of, 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 I'm still going to answer all of the questions. Send in your questions, or you can send it to hello at coderina.org, where we are going to um, answer all your questions. We can send it down to your email. Or we can you can use our social media platform to send any of the questions and we're going to we're going to yeah Lego Mindstorm fine Lego Mindstorm robots can you scratch to actually program Lego Mindstorm robots okay so guys that that's what um we can we were developing where scratch is having new new features every day and um, it's fun that we're having scratch and it's fun that I'm having um scratch uh, scratchers online okay and tony oh yes you can go over the video again to uh understand what we've done yesterday and so you can go over the video you can go over you can even go back go, go over our previous um video when we started the class what we did how we did what we did and how we got to this point that we are you can go over the video just subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking. If you have not clicked on the subscribe button for the YouTube channel, now is the right time for you to do it. Please click on the YouTube, um, click on our subscribe button on the channel so that you can get all of our notifications whenever we're doing something like this. So um, thank you guys for today. It's really wonderful having my scratch, my scratchers on board. Um, I'm going to be saying bye for this week. Enjoy the rest of the week. Do your assignments, send your assignment down to us. So up next yes. we'll be having robotics and engineering by um, 4 p.m. today. Uh, so hello, Jerry. Yeah, hello, sir. Yeah, um, it's John speaking. Uh, <clears throat> this was a very fantastic class that you've actually taken uh, all the learners through. And kudos to you for really taking it comprehensively. So uh, 
Yeah, part, part of what you're giving to them, we uh, over the week, we are going to make them to be able to have assets. You know, we're using Google Classroom before, but right now we've actually moved to Coderina Learning Portal. So uh, the, the, the video is going to be available right on YouTube. They, they will have your, the assignments set out on Coderina Learning Portal. So all of them should have, with the emails that they used to sign on, they should have emails in, and the username and password uh, registration in the Coderina learning platform uh, learning portal. Now, what's going to the interesting thing that we're going to be looking at is that perhaps we are going to do a studio for this uh, for the classes so that they can follow up with uh, doing remixes from uh, the examples that you have given to them or the illustrations that you have actually give, given to them. So, but all of that going to be sorted out during the week, but. In the meantime, like what you, uh, the facilitator has said, uh, the, the videos are av available perpetually on YouTube. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have a playlist. Um, I think I should be able to like, get us the playlist that all these videos are inside one playlist. So, and we're putting it continually inside a playlist so that it will be very easy for you to pick up and then go through everything. So we really appreciate everyone for really coming to the class. So. Uh, from our facilitator, uh, uh, your last word before we try to end this class. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Scratchers. Thank you, Scratchers. I, I, I love you all because you are my Scratchers now. So thank you for participating in this week's class. Don't forget to do your assignments and come back early next week so we have much fun. And remember, for those of us that want to share our screen, next week, before, before Saturday next week, we can send your parents can send their consents from to hello at coderina.org so that we can keep you up for next week. So we'll be joining the robotic and engineering class um, by 4 p.m. today. So thank you and goodbye. Yeah, so thank you everybody. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'll just do with some few announcements while I take off um, uh, our facilitator. Yeah, thank you, Jerry, so much. Uh, so, hello everybody, um, a quick one from me, this is John, uh, you would have actually received uh, the login details through the email that you used to register, so go check it for information about the CLP, the Inner Learning Portal, so you, from there you'll be able to like, get all the details of the classes and your assignments is going to be on it as well, and there will be lots, much more. Then by 4pm today in Nigeria, and that will be 3pm. Um, Ghana, uh, we are going to be having uh, the robotics class. The robotics class has actually been very uh, steaming. There is a whole lot of things going on there. I, and I bet you, you shouldn't miss it for anything. So please uh, join us by 4 p.m. Nigeria and 3 p.m. Ghana for the robotics class. And you're going to really have an awesome time. So then the, 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 the assignment for this week, as uh, Facilita has told us, Please make sure that you get yourself hands on. The beauty about Scratch is this it's a hands on thing. You don't have to wait to read so many. From the first minute, you have to be hands on. Think about all the wonderful uh, games that you've played before, uh, the, the, uh, the cartoons and all that. Then you can actually try your own now. You are a creator because you're a scratcher. I, I'll leave you with that. So I'll uh, see you at 4 p.m. for those ones that are going to join us at the robotics class. Then don't forget, get across to your parents. Let them send a consent for us if you want to showcase what you have actually done uh, on your platform, uh, on, on Scratch. Uh, you send, send a, a, an email to hello at coderina.org. Hello at coderina.org. We'll be looking forward to your emails and we'll respond Julie. Thank you very much and have a nice weekend. Regards to your family, regards to your guidance, regards to your parents, and we, we, we appreciate you coming on. God bless.